We will be demonstrating total knee replacement and severely various means in an adult male using computerized robotic technology with the ROSA system. Patient is positioned supine and there are a couple of bolsters underneath the knee in order to position it in flexion. The setup of the table is in a U-shaped manner where the scrub nurse have access to all the instrumentation at ease and they focus on the surgical tool. I use one or two assistants and the robotic arm have access access to the field from the proximal end. We start with midline incision. I do not use a tourniquet. I dissect the soft tissue while the robot is calibrating its position. Once the computer calibrates its position, we remove the calibration arm and replace it with the cutting arm. I perform medial parapetal approach. Once I perform the medial parapetella approach, I reflect the patella laterally. I remove the patella fat bag. Once we reflect the patella, we perform the patella resection. I measure the patella height and then I resect 10 millimeters. I leave measurement of 10 millimeters of patella intact. This patient has severe varus malalignment, so it is mandatory that we perform extensive soft tissue releases in order to achieve the balancing. I release the deep fibers of the medial collateral ligament, but maintain the superficial fibers of this ligament. We sublux the knee anteriorly. There is significant osteophytic changes on the medial side of the proximal tibia. We need to remove these osteophytes. We carefully remove the osteophytes from the medial proximal tibia and we do the same to the medial aspect of the femur. You can see that we removed the medial osteophytes of the femur and now there is significantly more laxity medially allowing the patient to have proper balance. Still varus and still in significant big flexion deformity but you can see there is more opening on the medial side with the ligament intact. We then proceed to position the navigation beacons. I position the pins slowly to avoid heat generation and potential fracture. We position the navigation beacon, one on the tibia, one on the femur, and then we proceed with identifying the landmarks in the hip, the knee joint, and the ankle. The first position is to identify the center of rotation at the hip joint, and there are 14 points to mark. Next, I identify surface markers on the actual knee joint, including the distal end of the femur, the anterior notch, the center of the femur, the medial epicondyle, the lateral epicondyle, and the anterior surface of the femur. The medial malleolus, lateral malleolus, tibial tubercle, the ACL insertion, the PCL insertion, the medial tibial plateau and the lateral tibial plateau. Finish with the surface landmark. We identify the position of the knee in space. You can see this patient has various malalignment of 8.5 degrees. That's after the release. And has fixed flexion deformity of 13 degrees. I exaggerate that to 13 degrees of varus and can minimize it to 4.5 or 4 degrees of varus. Still significant fixed flexion deformity. At 90 degrees of flexion, 10 degrees of varus, and can reduce it to 1.5 degree of valgus. There is significant opening in flexion. In extension, it is not giving as much. The platform here gives us an indication of where the robot will decide to cut. The information is given by the preloaded images prior to the surgery, added to the information that we obtained interoperatively, and then the computer will calculate and balance the position of the femur on the tibia. At this point, we're still a little tight medially and in extension compared to laterally. Flexion, we're relatively balanced, although a little tight.
So we have a 19 mil component to get inside that spoke. Based on this information, I need to go back and release more soft tissue in order to achieve more balance in extension. One of the tricks to balance the knee is to completely release the PCL and completely remove the lateral meniscus. Because in extension, the lateral meniscus is adding substance to the lateral compartment and that will push the patient more into varus especially after removing the medial meniscus totally. Anterior branch of the lateral genital vessel sits exactly in this point, so care must be taken to cauterize it to prevent bleeding. After removing the lateral meniscus and releasing the PCL, I would expect the patient to have more giving on the medial side and less varus in extension. You can see without putting any stress, the amount of varus has moved from 8 degrees to 5 degrees and I can push the patient to neutral. That is a significant change. As you can see after the releases, the medial side is now opened up to be closer to the lateral side in extension and likewise in flexion. I am happy with this balance now. Now we execute the plan to start the tibial cutting. We position the patient for the robot's arm to come and approach the tibia to perform the cutting. The arm is seated appropriately where the cutting should be performed on the tibia. The positioning is exactly how we plan it, so we execute the resection now. After the resection, I remove the robotic arm. I complete my tibial osteotomy using an osteotome. You can see the tibial resection, it's minimal on the medial side and it's around 10 millimeter on the lateral side. That is exactly how we planned it. We validate our resection and it's very close to what we've done. Once we finish with the tibial resection, we move to the femoral resection. Femoral resection is exactly how we planned it, 9mm on the lateral side and 7mm on the medial side. Again, we validate our resection with the computer. The computer already decided what size of implant we should use. Final step is to position the pins for the 4-in-1 cutting block. The 4-in-1 block is positioned accurately on the femur and secured with two oblique pins. We perform the final cuts. After performing the final cuts, we remove the block. I finalize my cut by cutting the posterior aspect of the condyle using osteotone. This will maximize the chance for deflection. Once I'm happy with the posterior cuts, I check in full extension to assess the balance and to assess for any bleeders. And then I recheck in flexion and the knee seems to be very well balanced in flexion. We can proceed to finalizing the tibial cut and insert the implant part. We template it a size G and that seems to be the right size for the tibia. We secure the tibial file in place using a screw. After broaching a keel hole, we put the trial spacer and then we position the trial femur. As planned, it's a size 10. We perform the lug drill holes and then we check the position of the trial femur. The computer is telling us that the alignment moved from 14 degrees varus to 2 degrees varus and from 13 degrees of fixed flexion to 3 degrees of fixed flexion and the knee seems to be very well balanced. I'm satisfied with the range of movement, the stability and the tracking. We can proceed with the definitive implant. As you can see, despite that there is no tourniquet, there is hardly any bleeding. We position the definitive implant on the tibia. Carefully I remove the excess cement. I then insert the plastic component as planned by the robot. I then insert the femoral component. 
I then assess the position of the implant on the computer. I assess the tracking. And you can see the tracking is excellent. We achieved zero flexion, one and a half degree of varus in extension, and zero degrees in 100 degrees of flexion. I'm satisfied with the patella tracking as well. We finally put the patella implant in place. We proceed to put the local anesthetics and closure. Thank you very much.